Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not his benefits. We do thank God once again. And I have a scripture reading that I want to read for you. The scripture that we will embark upon and we will give the word from. And that's Psalms 139 and, and uh, 139, 14. It says, I will praise thee. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. In that my soul knoweth right well. Father, we are grateful once again. This is time to service God. This is a time that we have come, Lord, to share not only uh, our testimony and saying the songs of Zion and not to come with the prayer that would be uplifting to all, but to come and share the word of God. We just ask for God that you would bless us, be with us in a special way. We thank you today for all that you've done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, since the Lord Turner is going to come to us at this time.
Holy One, you said, I command. You said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Your Bible has only that many Bibles have these two words, holy Bible written on them. And so he intends for us to be holy and to live holy and to live a life that's above reproach. It's time for us to pray, and we're praying that God will deliver us. As I said before, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God can deliver us out of all of them. God is just waiting to bless you. He's just waiting that is to catapult you into ministry. His hands are wide open and all kinds of golden gifts that is, is in his hands. And he just wants you to come and take one of those gifts. I thank God this morning that we can go to the Lord in prayer and that we can pray that God will do whatever we cannot do. We thank God that is that we are able to come before the throne of grace. Amen. So the Lord is going to come with a prayer song and we're going to ask Brother T to come back and to lead us to the throne of grace.
you all of those wonderful things. And we thank you for being our God. Father, we thank you right now. Lord, for this day, thank you that you have allowed us once again to break open the word of God and to share with your people. We ask that you would come now, Lord, and cover us with your anointing and with your spirit. And do this because of who you are, because you're the only one that has that supernatural that no one else has. Bless us now, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk about fingerprints, 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 amen. That is having God's uniqueness. Now, we all were created in the image and likeness of God, and we're saved by grace that is through faith, and this is not of ourselves. We're different from, that is, uh, we're uh, different from one another, believe it or not, amen. And uh, not only that, but in spite of our great diversity, the Bible says that we all were created in the image, in the likeness of God. We're talking Romans, that is 12 and 3. Not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to. It says it this way, for by grace, by the grace that's given unto me, I say to every one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but rather think of yourself, yourself as having super judgment. Amen. Not thinking that you have, amen, nothing in common. A lot of us have a lot in common with other people. Amen. That is before you got saved, we all had something in common. Because the Bible said we all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were created in God's image, but now we all are different. Amen. And the things that uh, we have in common are the things that make up our humanness. Amen. And we believe that all humans have the capacity to love. That is the thing. And to reason, to make decisions, to worship and to communicate, to be creative, and then to appreciate beauty. We're to worship God in the beauty and splendor of holiness. Now Psalms 139, 14 says that, I will praise the Lord, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, in that my soul knoweth right well. Now, he starts out in verse one of that chapter, chapter by saying, search me. He said that thou hast searched me, you know me, amen. You know me, and when uh, I sit down or when I stand, that is my going out and coming in. You know me far away. You know my every thought. Then he says, you chart my course. You chart my path ahead of me. And then he said, you tell me where to go, where to stop, and where to rest. He goes on to say that every moment God knows where I am. Amen. He said, you know what I am going to say before I say it. Amen. He said, thou hast beset me behind in, he said before, and laid your hands upon my head. And in verse 6 it says that knowledge is too, uh, it's too great, that is, to wonder. Uh, it's too wonderful, that is, for me. And I can never, he, and he said, get away from God. Amen. I can never be lost to his spirit. Amen. Or, or, uh, whether, wherever I go, the Spirit of God is there. He said, if I flee to, uh, uh, from the uh, presence of God and ascend to, into heaven, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, he says he's there. You understand? If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall the right hand of God hold me. Amen. It, it is the uh, how can I say it? it? It is He that has made us, believe it or not, and not we ourselves. We are His people, the sheep of His pastor, uh, and we're going to be thankful unto Him and we're going to praise His name. The Lord is good. Yes, He is. And uh, His mercy is everlasting. Now, a lot of people may uh, want to be like someone else. There's nothing wrong with that. But God has given each of us a uniqueness in personality or whatever as well as natural strength or weakness. He has given us a unique ability as well, every last one of them. Things such as our, uh, how can I say, hand, our hand and eye coordination. Amen. Uh, the ability to naturally, you understand, be an artist. The ability 
to naturally play an instrument, to be intelligent, believe it or not, the ability to run faster than someone else. Amen. Uh, not only that we are special and unique, but God has created us, amen, in amazing ways, believe it or not. Amen. And he's made it for us to do what? To contribute to what he is doing in the world. God just didn't make you, but he purposed us. Now, many people that come to Christ, amen, they bring something that the other person uh, don't have to offer, believe it or not. And rather uh, 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 than making uh, this thing, making us arrogant and, and uh, we have to be here, amen. God has given us the, the ability, amen, that is to be what? To be able to remain humble, amen, and we can celebrate this special gift that God has given us. He has affirmed it, amen, because it's in our plan, in the plan of our life. Now, now, God has numbered every last one of our names. Amen. He will fulfill every promise and he will do everything he said he's going to do in your life. But however, our choices and our actions matter. The way you live and whatever you do. Because it's always good to do what? Choose that which brings joy and purpose. Joy and purpose. Amen. Now, a human becomes unique when they find their strength and capabilities and their talents and giftedness. Amen. In God. And then, of course, these things are uh, that God has given them. You just don't find them and say that they were already there, and this and that and other. But God has given you. You see, God created us. That is for his glory. His glory and to bring glory and honor that is to him. Glory, honor, and praise. That is, these are the true riches, riches of God. The love, the splendor, the majesty, amen, of God. He created us, you understand, to bow down and to worship him, believe it or not. He can be God all by himself. You don't have to be just strong ever of God or forerunner. God can be God all by himself. So whatsoever you eat or drink or do, do it all to the glory of God. Am I right? Now, how are we different? We're different in many ways. Amen. But concerning your fingerprint and you being different, believe it or not, everybody has a fingerprint, and no two people have the same fingerprint. There's no two people in the world has the same fingerprint. Amen. If you're lost, your fingerprint can help find you. Amen. If, if you have committed a crime or whatnot, or there's been a crime, you understand, they're looking for your fingerprint. You see, being at that crime scene, no two people have the same fingerprint. No two. I don't, I don't know, no matter, no, it don't make no different uh, if they're twins or whatever. They don't have the same fingerprint. They can have a uniqueness about themselves, but they don't have the same fingerprint. It said that in pro ball, there's two twins that play ball. They have the same bank account. That's unusual, isn't it? They put their money in one bank account. Now, that is unusual, believe it or not. But guess what? They're not like it. They're not like they understand. You see, their fingerprint makes them different and unique, you understand. They're made different in the eyesight of God, you understand. In some kind of a way, they're different. And the fingerprint says that you're the only one that has a fingerprint like this one. Nobody else has a fingerprint. As they said, that some look alike. But they're not like, believe it or not. Now, for some of us, believe it or not, let me digress a little bit. We came from what I call humble beginnings. Lowly and humble beginnings. We pick cotton for the older group. They, they probably do the cotton, believe it or not. You see, for the younger group, you all didn't have an automobile while you was in high school. You walked and you caught the bus. If you was down south, you walk the, the dusty Delta roads uh, uh, of uh, wherever you live, believe it or not. But the thing about it is, is that, uh, believe it or not, uh, we all come from humble beginnings. I heard a man said that he lived in a house that didn't have running water, amen, they had an outdoor toilet and all of that. And we understand how God, what causes us to become successful, amen, and place us, what I call on a natural, I'm on the national, excuse me, international lay, uh, 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 place in your life. 
God can do that. You can come from humble beginning. Now, on the other hand, there's some people who were born wealthy. They had wealth. They never know what it was. You understand to be hungry. Uh, one day in your life, you understand. You, you know what I mean? And, and the thing about it is, uh, you can act like you're wealthy, but you're not wealthy. You're not wealthy. There's a difference between a thousandaire, a millionaire, and just flat out wealth. Some people were born into wealth, and I have met some people that were born into wealth. Amen. There are five money classes. We got the, uh, the upper, and then we have the upper middle. We got the middle, then we have the working class, then you have the lower class. Some people even come under the lower class. Some came from humble beginnings. And guess what? Some people never had to worry about money in their lifetime. Amen. But it makes no difference whether you're rich or poor. You understand? God has given you a uniqueness and a fingerprint that's not like anybody else's on the face of this earth. Now, ain't that amazing? That really, really is amazing. You understand? But we got a lot of preachers, but they're not alike. They are not alike. They understand. Believe it or not, you have a fingerprint that's not like anybody else. We're different. And we have to recognize. Hey, hey Amen. That uh, uh, that we're different. You understand? But the many blessings of God are still with you, whether you're rich or poor. You understand? We have to enjoy the blessings and benefits of God and all of the things that He's given us. You see, if God brought you out of darkness into His glorious light, you ought to celebrate that alone. You see, uh, and don't worry about the ignorance and poverty. And not only that, being chemical dependent, you understand? God, child abuse, being shamed and being in shame and all of that. God can bring you out of that, you understand? Wherever God or whatever, wherever God has brought you from, amen, he gives you the opportunity to present yourself as a helper and as a lover of people. That's why when some people get money, they do what? They not only look back, they go back, they give back. Am I right? They do all of the backs because they want to help somebody. Amen. And it's always, always remember that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Amen. But no matter how different you are, there is one opportunity we all share, and that is to welcome Jesus Christ into our lives. Don't ever forget that. That's the king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. No matter whether or not you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, Hispanic, Jew or Gentile, you can be his radiance. Amen. It makes no difference if you're from Corinth, if you're from uh, Ephesus or Philippi, whether or not you are a Nazarite, it makes no difference if you're from Birmingham, Alabama, or Birmingham, Michigan. Amen. You can still live with Christ in your home. Amen. Now we all have that in common, no matter how different you are. Amen. And if Christ, and if Christ I serve, live within your heart, amen, you can celebrate your differences without fighting one another, without going against one another, without disliking one another. Now, although we are different, but Christ is our common denominator. He's our common denominator. Amen. And no matter how poor Amen. Uh, how left out you feel, believe it or not. Yeah, amen. Christ is still your stepping stone to greatness. And a lot of people can't see that. We all are going to be different. We're going to be different. And different in many ways. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away, and the whole all things have become new. And he gives us the golden rule that says, do unto others as you would have him do unto you, believe it or not. Amen. You see, for you cannot lie down in a bed of peace and rest on cushions of comfort. Amen. Under that is the cover of the sky. If you let the sun go down on your wrath, you can't do it. Amen. So don't be like that person that's bitter. Amen. You're not so different until you can't love people. He'll never make you that different. Am I right? You see, you're not so different. Oh, oh life can be uh, could have crippled us. Amen. We're in, in the humble beginning stage when we didn't have much, but we don't have to live a bitter life. Amen. And all of those things that 
we have what we have encountered. You see, uh, wearing raggedy clothes while everybody else had good clothes, walking while everybody else had an automobile. But yet, what could you get without God? Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Look at the things that God has done for all of us. No matter how different we are, and we all talk about how different we are. We really, really do. I heard a lady say, God uh, uh, broke the mold when he made me. He made us. Uh, he made somebody. When he made me, he just cracked the mold and he dropped it. Some people actually believe that. But you better be careful. You're going to end up thinking you're better than other people and you're not. you really, really not. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? All of this, you see, you being poor and all of that was a stepping stone to greatness. Because the Bible says, amen, in him we live and we move and we do what? We have our being. And that's very important to me if it's not important to anybody else. Everybody knows John 3.16 that says, for God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, now, I just want to tell somebody, amen, did you, you understand? Being saved and being in Christ is not based on your last name. Amen. It's not based on the money you have. Amen. In the bank. It's not based on your skin color. Amen. Or the degrees that you got lined up on the wall. It's not based on what popularity. Some people just want to be fat, flat, out popular. It's not based on how long, amen, you sold dope and all of that, how long you stayed in prison. It's not based on you being what, uh, what I call a Democrat or a Republican, but it's based on the fact that you were willing to give your life to Christ, no matter how different you are. God has made, made people to know, to know whether or not you're living for him or you're living for the devil. Now, I saw this on TV. <clears throat> they put uh, a, a baby in the room. The baby mama was there. The baby mama had an identical twin. But when the baby came out of the room, guess what? The baby knew her mama. They put the baby back in the room again. You understand? And the mama changed sides. You understand? The mama put on a hat and dressed differently. The baby still knew his mama. No matter how unique that is you think you are, people can tell you when you live in for the Lord. Somebody is going to know whether or not you're living for God. They'll be able to recognize you, touch bases with you, communicate with you. I'm not talking about all this crazy stuff people do, but people need to know that, that regardless of how different you are, you need to live for the Lord. And you are different. You are different. Believe it or not, I've been living with a woman for 46 and 47 years. We just as different as day and night. Oh Lord, she's watch, watching the recording. But we're different. I'm sorry. We are different. And you're going to meet people that's, uh, that's different. How do you celebrate being different? Without fighting one another. Without abusing one another. Without thinking you more than the other person. Paul said, don't ever think that you're more than anybody else. Don't, don't ever do that. He says, calm down. Calm down and don't do that. How do we do that? You do it by doing what? Accepting Christ as your personal Savior. They used to say the foot of the cross is love. We understand. And we're all on just one, 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 one safe spiritual ground. We all walk on one spiritual ground. Amen. God didn't make us so different until we could take the Bible and kill people with it. The Bible is given to us to make people come alive. Believe it or not. But we got all kinds of people out there. You understand? Now, I don't know as much as a lot of people know, but I do know a few things concerning that is the word of God. And I do know this, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him, you're going to have to worship him in spirit and in, tr and in truth and come under the auspices of them. 
We're different, but we serve the same God. The skin the gift said here that there are many operations in administration, but there's one spirit that works in every one of them. So the preacher ought to be able to get along with the evangelist. The evangelist ought to be able to get along with the healer. Am I right? Same spirit, different fingerprint, but what brings us together is the spirit of the living God. That's why there shouldn't be no kind of foolishness in a local church. Finally, you understand. You see, the church is split. When you split the church, what do you do? You split up families. One sister said, I'm staying here. The other sister said, no, I'm going. Uh, if he goes and he starts the church, and she starts a church, I'm going with her. You have just split up a family. And God never intended for that to happen. Different people. Come on, Brother Ted, different people. But guess what? We serve the same God. Same grace, same you, same me. Same spirit that went down and said that that, that that was in Christ when he, he commanded the stone to be moved so he could get up out of the grave. Same spirit, same spirit. So we thank God for that. Father, thank you today. We ask that you would continue to bless us. Be with us in a special kind of a way. Regardless of people, who people think they are, and their differences and all of that, let them know that you are the common denominator that brings them together, that brought them out of darkness into your glorious light. They need to know that. Lord, we hear people say who they like, and, and they got this one and that, but they all probably got pigs. But guess what, Lord? The common denominator that makes us a church is you. You were the one that gave your life on Calvary so that we would have a right to the tree, to the tree of life. Thank you, Lord. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is so good to know that God said he sits the members in place and not us. But we thank you for that word, Pastor. And there's some information at the end of the service. If you're looking for a church home, I know we're not, maybe not in the same state, same city, but you can still be a part of this ministry. If you want to send some money, we have a uh, Amplify that you can use. Uh, put a check in the mail. Uh, 1741 Joseph Gombo, 48212. Or just you just want some prayer, but there's information at the end of the service that you can see to the Lord to uh, get that information. We thank God for the word. Hopefully you've been encouraged. Hope you've been blessed. Thank you.